We are checking in again with Maureen Geary of the Quincy Planning Department to chat a little bit about uh, available help for local businesses. So Maureen, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Joe. Thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure. Appreciate the opportunity to let folks know uh, what assistance uh, might be out there, at either through uh, the city uh, here in Quincy or through the state um, as well. I know you can kind of help, help businesses uh, navigate that. Well, that's pretty much what our office um, does uh, out of the planning department. I'm the director of community uh, business and government relations. Um, and I work with our local business community in trying to find resources for them, um, both in good times and bad. And I think over the past months, um, we have worked very closely with our federal um, and state officials um, to provide as much service uh, as possible as far as funding, um, resources, um, collaboration with uh, the chamber um, to get, try and provide as much information as possible um, to help them navigate what's going on with COVID um, and navigate the resources that are out there to help keep them in business and keep them safe. Right. I know there was uh, city money available earlier during the pandemic. And how did that process go? So that process went really well. Um, in, in conjunction with the planning department and our CDBG director, um, Sean Callan, uh, there was a whole team of us that that really jumped uh, in headfirst, dived into um, the program that we created, which was the Small Business Grant Program. Um, that within two months, we had, I want to say, $2 million out into our small business community. Um, so what that helped was get some of these business owners passed a couple of months of back rent, employee um, payments, um, you know, operational expenses, basically. And, and it, went, it went really, really well. Um, we funded over 376, I want to say, small business owners in the city, which was a huge accomplishment. Um, we wish we could have done more, but the ones that applied, you know, they, they were able to get the funding. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a critical time, really, because um, everything was pretty much shut down tight. Nothing was really open right. at that time. Yeah, right. There was no gen. There was no, I want to say most of them weren't generating any income at all. Right. And I, and I know a lot are still struggling at this point. Yeah, they are, um, which is why I guess the state has stepped up now, right, uh, with some assistance. The state, so there is a program that was just um, released by the state, the state of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth, um, and it's a $50 million small business grant program. Um, I can give you some of the details. So um, it is to support our small businesses, the micro enterprises and the small businesses in the community. There are two actual programs that came out of this. Um, so preference will be given to small business owners, minority owned business owners, women owned business, um, veterans and members of the underrepresented groups um, who are representing businesses in the gateway cities, which Quincy is a gateway community. Um, pre preference for this program is also given to small business owners who, um, who have not received federal aid um, from other programs. So there, there are a number, when, when, the, when all this came about, there were some programs that a lot of small business owners just were challenged with applying for because they were challenging, they were difficult applications. Um, you know, working with the bank was challenging because they were flooded. So there are a lot of business owners who never took the opportunity to get those federal funding. So this is a program I would urge every small business owner, whether you've gotten, uh, you know, whether you have not received um, federal funding to apply for this, this grant program. Okay. Um, so just a couple of the details, and I would yeah. suggest I'll give a, an email, I mean, a, um, a link for, the, for them to follow up with. Um, but there are two, two programs out of this. So they applied, this program applies to uh, micro enterprises with five employees or less, and they can, um, they can get a grant of up to $25,000. Using those funds, you can pay for rent, you can pay your mortgage, you can pay for working capital and operation expenses. Okay. So that's these are, critical. These are grants, right? You don't have to pay them back. These are grants. You're not paying them back. Okay. Nope. And the other program is for business owners with 50 employees or less. And that program, they can get up to $75,000 in grant funding. Mm. Um, and these funds may be used for the same type of things, employee payroll, benefit cost, operation expenses, things like that. Um, some, of the, some of the funding, well, the funding cannot be used for just a couple of items. Like, you know, they can't purchase real estate, purchase equipment, nothing new. What they're looking to fund are what these companies have lost mm -hmm. and what they're trying to recoup um, at this point. But... Um, I, I would I would highly recommend that folks go to um, it's empoweringsmallbusiness 
mgcc.org. MGCC, Mass Growth Capital Corporation. Okay. They'll be, they're, they're managing um, the fund. And uh, when you go to that website, you'll find details on eligibility and the required documentation in order to process um, your application. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I would say to business owners who did receive our small business grant, a lot of the documentation that uh, MGCC is requ requesting, you would already have that oh. pulled together and in play. So okay. I, I've, I've advised a number of um, business owners who have called me, you know, concerned about providing this documentation. And I think most who have received our grant would have a lot of that paperwork in place, which is okay. really important. Yeah, the work's been um, done. The work has been done, right. And and I have to say the program is ending. The state is closing the program on November 12th. Oh, okay. So it's been out since October 10th, uh, October 22nd. Okay. Um, and I have provided information to our business community through my newsletter and, and various other ways, you know, through the chamber, um, through the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. um, so the information has gotten out there, but some folks might not have heard it. So cool. I would just urge people to get online and get that application. They can certainly call me with any questions, but it's a, it's a very easy, they made it very easy. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the window is closing. Is there a cost to apply at all, Maureen? There is no cost. No, okay. there's no application fee. No okay, so there's really no, um, there's no downside to, to try. There's, right? there's no downside. Try. That's, that's what I've told every business owner. Just try. Just, just like with our grant program. If you don't think you fit into the, to the guidelines or to the, to the um, eligibility requirements, just try anyway. doesn't hurt. Sure. Absolutely. It could be critical. That's, that's a significant amount of funding, twenty-five dollars or $75,000. That could carry them through, you know. It can go, it can go a long way. Sure. And the other thing is the money can go fast as well. We saw that with MGCC, their first round of funding back in, um, I want to say, April. I think within 48 hours, the money was gone. Wow. Okay. Right. This is, this is a little different because they are targeting um, minority and women-owned businesses. So they're, they're narrowing the field, I would say, mm -hmm. on the eligibility, which is great because this is, um, I would say this is a field that, that has been, I don't want to say overlooked, but sometimes just kind of gets overlooked because they're not advocating for themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this program is pretty specific. Okay. Very good. I know there's a link on the city website uh, as well. Folks can yes. go there right in the, the COVID-19 banner on the homepage of quinzyma.gov. Yes, we should find it there. Yes. Uh, tell me about the My Local Mass campaign. Oh, My Local Mass campaign. Well, oh. So that's an interesting campaign um, established by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, and the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. Oh. And I understand Tourism Director uh, Dagny Ashley um, has been on to talk about that as well. She's yes. been doing a great job. She and I um, have been collaborating with a number of our colleagues um, to try and get the word out there. So basically the program is um, put your money where your heart is and Massachusetts is where we want to spend our money. And we want people to know that. So it's shop local, buy local. Um, it's a statewide initiative. So it's every community. Um, business owners can get onto their website, download materials that'll help them um, promote themselves. Okay. So shopping local, stay local. People are going to be staying local. I, mean, I think we understand that. And, and what we'd like for them to do is, is really find our small business owners and, and, and shop there. And so this program will give us an opportunity to go out and meet with them, put, our, put, the, put the logo in the front window and let people know you're part of this campaign. It's not a program or anything. It's yeah. a campaign yeah. um, to get the information out there. It's, uh, I'm sure um, it's critically important that businesses have a strong online presence uh, right now, right? This is where I think most people are spending their time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we've seen that as a need for a lot of business owners to learn now um, how to do that. Yes. Um, and I can turn on to our, our kind of my next topic with that because we, as part of our small business grant program, um, we surveyed our, the 377 um, business owners and said, what is it next that we can help you with? What mm -hmm. is it that, that you need funding that we, we, we got you there. So what is it next that we can help you with? And a lot of it revolved around workshops. Mm. So they, we need financial advice um, social media advice, um, uh, information on the SBA programs, you know, the forgiveness programs. So we listened very carefully to that. And um, in collaboration with a lot of my, the federal, the SBA, SCORE, Small Business Development Center. So we talked to all these folks and said, well, how do we put together a program for these business owners? 
Um, and we came up with, we had part one, which was a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, we missed it for this, yeah. um, for this discussion, but um, was, it was a digital marketing program. Okay. And we had 170 app, um, registrants. Great. People register for the program. And it turned out to be an excellent, um, an excellent opportunity. It was what people were looking for. Yeah. Um, come Monday, the part two of um, our workshop is financing and banking. Okay. So we were able to get um, one of the key um, executives or, or um, financial specialists at the Small Business Development Center, which is a federal agency. They're part of SCORE or funded by SCORE um, and the SBA. And they will be talking, her and, uh, um, excuse me, two, two women, um, Jill Beresford and um, sorry, Kathleen Kelly. Kathleen mm -hmm. Kelly is from um, Webster Bank. Oh, and okay. so they'll be talking about opportunities. It's called a reality check. Like it says loans from a banker's perspective, what your bank needs to see from you mm. on paper, not in your head, on paper, in order for you to understand how to get a business loan. Okay. So it's pretty, um, it will be, it's, it's going to be a very interesting um, discussion and real, real life. They have worked with business owners for years um, and they know how business owners think and they know the, what business owners actually don't do uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they go to a bank for a loan. So if you want to get some really good, fresh tips, um, please join us on, on Monday, Monday after, evening at six o'clock. Okay. Um, and these are virtual, I'm assuming, right? They're all virtual. Yep. Yep. So far we have, I think we have 50 or 60 um, registrants for this program as well. Okay. And then the last program, um, which will be held on December 7th, um, we're ironing out some details on this one, but this one will focus on, um, it's an SBA representative and it's going to focus on the payroll protection program forgiveness mm -hmm. portion of it. So if you have a PPP loan out there and you're looking to figure out how to have it forgiven, you will be walked through the step in the process oh, for this. Okay. And South Shore Bank is going to join um, the discussion and, and, um, and add, you know, a lot of great information. Okay. That that's great. I didn't know it could be forgiven actually. So that's, that's probably news. Yeah. Well, no, that's part of, yeah, no, there was, um, I, I don't, I don't want to go into too many of the details on it, but what it, it is part, if you, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the, so why are the PPP forgiveness program? Oh, all right, okay. sure, okay. <laughs> I, I can't December explain 7th. it the way, that, the way I would like to. So um, there is a forgiveness program. So, um, and I think applicants are pretty familiar with it. Um, they just need to be able to process the, the paperwork. Yeah, okay. Uh, are all, uh, these workshops, Marie, will they be available after the fact if folks aren't able to attend? Will they be Good point. Recorded? That was my last point on that. You're right, oh, okay. yes. So we'll have them recorded. Yep. Um, the first one was um, managed by the chamber. Well, we're in collaboration and, and, and working with the chamber on these programs as well. So um, uh, they will be, I think they're on Facebook actually. Okay. So we will have them, um, all three of them available for viewing at any time. Great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's probably something people can refer back to, you know, again and again. Absolutely. What did they say about this particular topic? Let me go back and check. Yeah. Right. And, and, they're, and they're just about an hour. So, um, okay. you know, you're not sitting for two or three hours listening to or watching slides or any of that stuff. So it's, yeah. it's they're pretty, very, very informative. That's great. That's very good. Anything else we should touch on, do you think, right now? Um, I think those are my three yep. major topics um, for the business community, I would, um, you know, I just want to thank, obviously, my the SBA and the SCORE and SBDC and MOBD, all of these organizations, both on the federal and state level, have been fabulous work with us um, in reaching out to our business community, the chamber as well, the mayor's office, the mayor has done an amazing job um, keeping people informed and, and reaching out for resources and giving back to them um, what he can and what we can. Um, I'm available. I can, my number is 617-376-1266. My colleague, Jim Scribby, and I work together and, um, you know, we're here to provide, if we don't have the resource, we will help find the resource, um, but we're here to help is really the message. Okay, great. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and let folks know um, about what's going on. And if we can be of any help here at QATV, please uh, reach out. We'd be happy to do that for you. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Good to see you. Take care. Good to see you. Bye-bye.